Hello everyone, here today to talk to you about the New York State primary results. This is the second time I'm recording this because I did not have the mic on with my iPad. So that's an epic fail. Okay. So, I just want to mention, last night, I was supposed to do this but I had a personal phone call. So I had to ditch the um, stream last night because literally... I had a friend who was going to call me, you know, personal reasons, and I wanted to talk to her because she was upset, so, um, yeah. So, let's get into the primary results. We're going to go into Queensboro President. City Councilman Donovan Richards easily won by 10,000 votes against Elizabeth Crawley and City Councilman Constan Constantidas. Now... Let's get into who Elizabeth Crowley is. So, first of all, Elizabeth Crowley, she was previously in the city council for the 30th district. So, a lot of people in the city council or former city council people tried running for the seat that was vacated by current Queens District Attorney Melinda Katz. So... There you have it. Donovan Richards will go on. The only issue is, is there a Republican that's going to challenge him? That is a good question. And I want to mention that Donovan Richards is in the 31st district of the city council. So, there you have it. Now let's get into the rest. Joe Biden won the primary in New York. Surprisingly, Bernie Sanders got a decent amount of votes. Another shock was Mike Bloomberg. Look how many votes he got. That is very surprising. Very surprising. Okay, let's get into Suffolk County. Yes, we're going to talk about District Number 1. Now, let's get into Perry Gershon who is a businessman. Now, back in 2018, he won the primary, took on Lee Zeldin, and then lost to Lee Zeldin. Well, looks like Perry Gershon gets his rematch from 2018. He will take on incumbent Congressman Lee Zeldin, who is, of course, tied to Donald Trump. So, I wonder if this district in Suffolk is going to flip. There's a possibility, but only time will tell in November. A district that can go either way is district number two. This is Peter King's district. If you are not aware, Peter King is retiring in January. Jackie Gordon will be the Democratic nominee, and Andrew Garbiano will be the Republican nominee. District three. Former Nassau County Executive and current Congressman Tom Swazi easily won his primary last night. He represents parts of Great Neck and Manhattan and Port Washington. He also represents Little Neck and Douglas and Queens. And of course, parts of College Point and Whitestone. Tom Swazi won. He faced two other challengers. And there will be a Republican challenging him in... November, George Santos. District 4, which includes most of the south shore of Nassau County. Kathleen Rice ran unimposed. She will be taking on Douglas Terman on November 3rd. In my district, District 6, which represents Flushing, Fresh Meadows, and Bayside, Grace Meng won with 61.3% of the vote. 15,181 votes. She will take on Thomas Smink. But this should be an easy one. Grace Ming should get another term in November. This is a funny one. This is Brooklyn. Didia Vasquez taking on a candidate named Paperboy Prince. Well, that was a funny one. But she will be taking on Brian Kelly in the November election. Yvette Clark in District 9 was facing a lot of competition. But, of course, 
she will move on to the November election, taking on Constantine Jean Pierre. District 10, the west side of Manhattan and parts of Brooklyn. The chairman of the Trump impeachment inquiry from 2019, Jared Nadler, easily won his primary last night. There were two other younger people who were taking him on. Jared Nadler is, of course, 73 years old. I looked that up before I recorded. So Lindsey Bolin and Jonathan Herzog lost, but I think they're going to be around in the future. Because I don't know how much longer Nadler's going to stay in Congress anyway. All right, Kathy Bernstein, she will be taking on Jared Nadler in the November election. Now let's talk about Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, and Staten Island. Max Rose. Now, let's talk about this race from 2018. As you know, in 2018, this was one of the biggest upsets in political history in Staten Island. The incumbent Dan Donovan lost to Max Rose. Now, Max Rose was previously in the military before he served in Congress. So, he ran unimposed. In the Republican primary, you had... Establishment candidate Nicole Maliotakis. She was, of course, the Republican nominee for mayor in 2017, taking on the incumbent Bo de Blasio and private investigator Bo Deedle. Joseph Caldera, private citizen who was anti establishment, was challenging her. He lost, so it was supposed to be a close race, but Nicole Maliotakis easily won. And I quickly want to mention that there will be a new person in the Assembly for Staten Island coming in the fall. So I just want to quickly mention that. So this race could go either way in November. I think it's really going to be close. But I will be completely shocked if Max Rose uh, doesn't have close numbers with Namalia Takis. It's, it's clear cut. I'm looking at the 2018 results very quickly. Max Rose won with 53% of the vote, and Dan Donovan won with 46.6% of the vote. And he had 20 more thousand votes in the popular category. Oh, my mom is coming to apologize. Let's talk about District 12. Carolyn Maloney. Yes, let's talk about Carolyn Maloney. Alright? So, Sir Jot Patel... And I will mention this. Sir Jot Patel actually, believe it or not, tried to run against her in 2018. Here he comes in 2020. And look how close this was. There were two other people even running for the seat. Carolyn Maloney, I will just mention that she is the current chair of the House Oversight Committee. She was previously the vice chair of the Joint Economic Committee. She has been in Congress for almost 30 years. She is 74 years old. And currently right now, this is correct, she will move on to the November general election. It was a very close race. And she will be facing Carlos Santiago Cano. So this is the east side of Manhattan, District 12. District 10 is the west side of Manhattan. So I just want to mention that. In District 14, part of the Bronx and Queens, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Now, let's recap what happened in 2018. In 2018, she shocked the world by defeating the establishment candidate Joseph Crawley. This time, there was an establishment candidate named Michelle Caruso Cabrera, who used to be an MSNBC contributor. She used to be Republican, then turned Democrat. She lost by a huge margin. So AOC will move on to the general election, taking on John Cummings. This should be an easy win for AOC come November. Now let's talk about District 15 or as I like to call it, city council people trying to run for Congress. So Orlando Molina will take on current councilman Richie Torres, who won with 30.4% of the vote, 12,421 votes. 
You had Ruben Diaz Sr. running. His son, Ruben Diaz Jr., is the Bronx Borough President. Councilman Adas Rodriguez also ran for the seat. Former city councilwoman and former city council speaker before Corey Johnson, Melissa Mark Favorito, won what also challenging. So look at that. That was a close one. Longtime incumbent councilman Elliot Engel, who was accused of not paying his taxes, took on middle school principal Jamal Bowman. There were other people running, of course. Middle school principal, anti-establishment candidate Jamal Bowman won this race. So look at that. We actually have an upset. Huge upset. District 16, parts of Westchester and the Bronx. So the establishment candidate, Elliot Angle, lost. District 17, Mondier Jones won. I thought that Adam Schleifer was going to make it close, but apparently not. There were two Republicans running in this district in upstate. Maureen McRide Shulman won. John Patrick Maloney in District 18 will be taking on 2018 New York Senate candidate Shell Farley. In 2018, Shell Farley ran against Christian Joabrand. So, word of advice for Shell Farley, she has to tone it down the makeup. All right, that was... Seeing her on TV a couple years ago just creeped me out. I liked her ideas, but, you know, please, don't wear that much makeup. Liz Stefniak, don't need to get into that. She's going to take on Tedra Cobb. Last but not least, let's talk about a special race in District 27. Chris Jacobs easily won, taking on Nathan McMurray. So, look at that. This was a special election, but there's going to be another race in November. So, that's interesting. Special election, and then this is the November one coming up. <laughs> Alright, so with that, I'm going to wrap it up. Once again, you're voting for Congress in November. Each seat in Congress is up for grabs, no matter what state you are in. Here in New York, I want to mention, um, State Assembly, my district, John Liu, was not a po- was not being challenged by anyone. 2018 was a different situation because he took on the incumbent Tony Avela. And of course, that was a huge upset in 2018. And of course, that was the contested race with Vicky Palladino and Simon Minching. So 2020 is a different situation. John Liu does have a Republican challenger. But John Liu should easily win his race in November. I'll be shocked if he loses. And I'll mention in my district, State Assembly, Nilly Rosick was unopposed. She will move on to another term in November. So, yeah. So, keep an eye out for State Senate. Keep an eye out for the State Assembly in New York. I mean, I won't go into every race in November, but November 3rd is coming. It'll be coming like that. And I certainly hope I'm going to be voting in person. Hopefully, I'll take the necessary steps if the... uh, Social distancing is still required. So with that, thank you all very much for watching. And again, I'll just mention, I didn't say this. Some ballots still have to be counted. And that's going to take a while with the mail in balloting with absentees. And also one last quick thing. Um, I did a video earlier about a 15-year-old boy who was missing from Queens. The good news is the NYPD has just reported within the last uh, 15, 20 minutes ago that the boy was found safe. However, the brother is still on the run. So at least the good thing is the 15-year-old boy is safe. That's the main thing. So I'm glad they, um, they found him. So with that, till the next one, please take care.